Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the Riptide. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think. Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Hey, howdy, hey, my brewing brothers and sisters. Greetings, Cretans. <laughs> the main Cretan himself. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're happy to be with you again today. It's been a while, been a month or so. In in the world of Cretans, yep. you are you are their, their master, master Cretan. <laughs> well, I do try. <laughs> uh, yeah, What's it's... new with you? Oh my God! Just you know, life, things. Um, I'm, I'm going to England. I'm going to England Monday. Yeah, nice. April nice. April fourth, flying out. Going to be the fifth through the twelfth. I think it is now. Nice. Yeah, going back to Fuller's or where are you going? Going to um, well, it, it's a, a part of Fuller's, which is Dark Star. Uh, oh, okay. We're going to brew Gale's Prize Old Ale. Ooh, which is nice. uh, yeah, uh, kind of uh, an old ale, uh, big old ale, and one of the things they do, they have like a Solara going uh, of the previous batches of Gale's Prize Old Ale, and so mm-hmm. a little bit of that gets added into the into the batch. So um, I was told that it could be possible to taste that Solara before it goes in. So. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, my my good friend uh, Henry Kirk at uh, Fuller's, he's gonna uh, gonna host us, and then uh, my good friend Neil Spake, he's going with us. Oh, nice! Uh, and then, uh, all right, so we're going down to Brighton for the brew. Then we're gonna we're gonna probably hit a few places there. Then we'll hit uh, Harvey's. Uh, right, one of my favorite cool. places in the world is Harvey's, and we'll. we'll chug a whole bunch of harvey's beer uh with henry henry used to work at harvey's oh nice okay yeah and then we're we're off up to uh birmingham and we're going to visit uh you know the uh the uh, west midlands um which uh they refer to as the black country um and we're going to uh, uh go to bantham's uh Hook Norton, which is kind of out of that reach, but Hook Norton, Bantham's, uh, uh, Holden's, uh, Sarah Hughes, drink our, our fill of mild and other wonderful uh, Midlands beers. Mm. And then, um, you know, probably do something in the city there, in the, in the core city, some of the more modern brewers. And then uh, a quick trip down to Cardiff, going to visit the new Brains facility. They moved oh, their, yeah. their brewery. Um, within Cardiff to a new, more modern brewery visit them. And then that's, that's the trip. Yeah. That's pretty nice. You get to Wales and all over Brighton. Yeah. Uh, known for Pride and Prejudice among other things. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fish and look forward to it. You have any trips coming up? Yeah. I'm going to Mexico city next week, the next weekend. Um, nice. Doing a, what is it called? The mash homebrew cup. Um, so competition for homebrewers in Mexico city, doing some homebrewing classes there at my friend Lucia's brewery. Um, and we're going to do some collaboration brews. Um, Randy Mosher is going to be there. Uh, Michael Tonsmeyer is going to be there. And so we'll do some, some, uh, native, uh, fruits of Mexico and, uh, styles of Mexico, including poke, do some poke tasting. Hmm. which is like a uh, wild fermented pineapple drink. Um, yeah, hmm. a, a lot of interesting stuff. I, I love going to Mexico. There's just so much, 
so much culture there beyond Taco Bell, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. It is really great down there. Nice. I imagine they wouldn't have any Taco Bells in. in no, no, they just have outstanding tacos. And uh, but they still have uh, McDonald's. Yeah, they do. I think. See, uh, they're that's... they're not terribly plentiful, if right. I remember right. But but as but as an American, it is my my God given right to be able to use the bathroom at any McDonald's in the world. There you go. Yeah, instead of having them charge you a quarter for it's it. Yeah. Just the way, just the way things work. You, yeah, yeah. Need to be uh, uh, allowed. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> exciting news. Um, I just got an email the other day that uh, How to Brew is going to publish in Portuguese in August. Nice. Nice. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of translations of like the yeast book. Yeah. And, uh, I just every once in a while, like the yeast book shows up in the mail in some <laughs> language. I'm just like, oh, yeah. what's this? Korean, Italian, yeah. Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It was, it was pretty exciting. I'd like to have a copy of every language it's in, but I don't think I do. Only I, I see I see people post them online in different languages. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. I didn't get one. <laughs> it is pretty. It is pretty cool. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I was. In fact, uh, how to brew is in Polish. It came out in Polish this past year, and had been planning on going to Poland at some point. This mm-hmm. may perhaps this summer, but. Uh, yeah, not think? right now. <laughs> yeah, not right now. Uh, not right so close there to Ukraine at the moment, but um, yeah. I sure would love to go there. Yeah, me too. I've always, I've always wanted to go. Uh, yeah. Seems uh, like a great place to visit. That whole area is uh, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much history. So many, you know, so many unique beers uh, that we we think we know they taste mm-hmm. like yeah and, uh, yeah 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 uh yeah that whole that whole region uh very cool we did a uh kind of a collab i sort of participated in a collab of 20 swedish brewers uh and a ukrainian brewer <laughs> uh and so i kind of jumped in on on, on joining that digitally nice uh in support of ukraine so hopefully that works out yeah uh, yeah yeah um you know i'm sure who else is uh, uh jumping in on ukrainian <laughs> jumping, jumping in on ukraine or is planning some travel for some some great beer things our dear friend uh, john blickman yeah uh, they sponsor this show so you don't have to pay for it uh blickmanengineering.com uh, check them out. They got all sorts of great stuff on there and they, uh, they do a lot to support the homebrew community and the commercial brew community. They got everything from, you know, your, your basic starter equipment, uh, still high quality, but you know, a little more, uh, a little more basic in the anvil stuff. And then they got the, the engineering line that goes up into commercial brewing sizes. So if you're, yeah. if you're looking to open a brewery, uh, or if you just want to get started in homebrewing, check out Blickman Engineering, uh, BlickmanEngineering.com. Send a, a nice email to John Blickman, feedback at BlickmanEngineering.com, uh, and uh, tell him how much you appreciate he pays for the show. All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, SOPs. Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, why why you would want SOPs, how they benefit you, Um let, let's let's kick it off with just this how john uh, or what is an sop what does sop stand for it's an acronym right right it stands for standard operating procedure mm. and so today's show is geared more to the commercial side of brewing um and you know if you own a brew pub or a small brewery that's more than just you and your buddy um more people brewing on a weekly basis it helps to do things consistently mm-hmm. if you're going to produce a consistent product right and though so having a documented standard operating procedure for a process really helps make sure that you and your coworkers are on the same page right yeah and i think uh you know possibly this has some value in uh, home brewing if you and, and a friend or a couple of friends get together 
and, you know, share equipment and do all that. I, I've, I've come across groups where it's like, yeah, we have a, you know, like the club brew plant. And then we, you know, yeah. um, you know, I, I imagine you could, you could utilize it there. I know at Heretic, we use uh, a ton of uh, SOPs, you know, everything from um, cleaning mash, the, yeah. the, the mash ton to, you know, starting up the, the brewery to, um, you know, making uh, the canned cocktails, uh, you know, process for, you know, cleaning the, the canning line for, you know, adjusting the canning line. <laughs> Um, you know, pitching yeast, cleaning fermenters, everything in there, you know, and it, it all started with, you know, just one SOP and then another and another, and you, you add these and, uh, you know, you eventually have a book of these. And one of the things I remember, uh, one of our new guys, Ben Edwards back in the day, um, when he started, he would spend his lunchtime reading the SOP manual. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a great training tool because then you're sure everybody's getting trained the same way. Everybody's working from the same plan, uh, from the same hymnal, singing from yeah. the same hymnal, right? That's right. You know, in fact, that brings up another aspect of SOPs. Um, and that is federal regulations. Mm. There are federal regulations that, uh, from the Food Safety Modernization Act that was fully implemented in 20, 2018, a couple, three years ago, um, that requires you to have or to be able to demonstrate that all your employees, and this pertains to breweries, have been trained uh, to their jobs and that they are competent. Mm -hmm. So having a printed manual that everyone can refer to uh, is a way to demonstrate that. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The same thing goes for other things like uh, you know, OSHA. If you, if somebody wants to enter a, uh, you know, a, a closed vessel, you yeah. have to, in a closed space, you have to, you know, have a written plan for going, going in. And essentially that's also an SOP. Right. You know, yeah. How do you how do you get set up? How do you make sure it's safe? How do you you know all those things? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of there are a lot of regulations that vary depending on the scale of the brewery. Mm. But even even very small breweries, you know, one barrel systems um, are um, subject to a few of these requirements. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, having having SOPs. Going back to that, you know, uh, allows you to demonstrate to, to uh, doc, you know, it's documented, it's right there, um, and and show any inspector, or God forbid you have an accident at work, you know, to demonstrate that you know you are not incompetent. Well, you can you know, <laughs> if I can yeah. demonstrate that I'm not incompetent, yeah, that'd be huge. Yeah, but you know, sometimes it can. It, and having SOPs can mean the difference between a slap on the wrist and plant closure mm. uh, in the case of an accident, for example. All right. Um, let's do this. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we will uh, have more about uh, SOPs and what they mean uh, for a brewery right after this. It's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature March pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack 
on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your brew easy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The brew easy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your brew easy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new brew easy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new brew easy. Back to the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. All right, we're back. Um, so, John, we're talking SOPs, and you mentioned, uh, you know, it could it could be the difference between a slap on the wrist or you know, getting getting your plant closed down. What are the most important SOPs? I mean, I think this becomes daunting for people when they're like, "Well, so I need this huge book of of uh, SOPs." Um, you just start with one, right, and just uh, yeah. everything that you know, whatever is most beneficial to you is the one I would start with, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, for small operations, uh, you know, having a written document that, dis- for instance, describes how you are going to turn on the brew plant mm-hmm. and, you know, start that brew, uh, how you gauge your water to grist ratio, you know, to mm-hmm. know when, you know, when you're trying to brew a particular recipe, how do you know you're at the right level? Because, mm-hmm. you know, if you and your buddy are, are mashing in differently, yeah, those beers are going to be different. And that mm-hmm. can be potentially an issue. Um, so for an SOP, and uh, it helps to have them written down, but they can either, you know, they can be uh, manual, if they were, as it were, you know, just handwritten, or they can be on a, on a computer, on a laptop that's available, whatever. Um, you use Google Docs, I believe, Jamil, right? Yes, we put yeah, all our SOPs on, on Google Docs or OneDrive. Yeah, you just need, you know, a version number, a revision number, uh, and a date, and, mm-hmm. you know, and a, and a person to sign off on it, you know, somebody that's responsible mm-hmm. to make sure that that SOP is up to date, um, and, uh, you know, and it, that means that it's controlled, mm-hmm. because that's another aspect when it comes to uh, federal law is that you must, uh, you must show that these are controlled, that they're active. Mm-hmm. John uh, was asking, uh, hey, I just jumped into this a little late. Are there third-party consultants companies that brewery startups can use to establish SOPs? I would imagine so. I, mm-hmm. I don't know for sure, but I would certainly imagine there is. I know I'm working with Carl Ockert. Many of you may be familiar with his work. He wrote, uh, uh, was it called the Brewery? Got one right here. Uh, MBA Practical Handbook for the Specialty Brewer a few years ago. Familiar with these titles. Mm-hmm. Um, he wrote those, and now he's writing one uh, called the Craft Brewer's Handbook, which will be publishing later this year. And uh, he discusses um, a lot of the regulations that apply to breweries now the you know food modernization food safety modernization act for one osha for another um and so yeah i met, would imagine that with with this uh, these federal laws that there are mm-hmm. you know the equivalent of tax consultants available to help you uh get started and then he's going to have um uh, templates in mm-hmm. the book that, sh- that give you examples you know, an SOP doesn't have to be complicated. Right. Um, it ha- simply has to lay out the steps of what you do mm-hmm. um, to help guide you through the process. Right. And it, yeah, doesn't have to be doesn't have to be detailed. It just has to be a basis for doing a job consistently and safely. Well, and you know, we do. Um, you know, our first SOPs were just you know to, to open up Word or, you know, whatever word processor you use and, you know, give it a title as to what the process is. Right. And then, yeah. um, uh, you know, try, try writing it out. If, if you were to tell somebody how to do a job, 
um, that's what you put down on it. And yeah. then you can go and, you know, rework it later on. You can, you know, revise these things as, as your process changes. It doesn't lock you in forever on, right. on a process. Uh, in fact, it actually helps um, identify, you know, what may be flaws in your process. Once you write it down, writing something down really kind of, you know, spells it out. Okay, here's what we're doing. And and then, uh, like John's saying, when you have uh, you're working with your buddy, uh, even if it's just the two of you in a in a you know a small brew pub that you've you've opened, it's good to just write these down. And then you can say, oh, well, I've been doing it differently. <laughs> I've been yeah. doing it that way. And then maybe you decide what's the best way to do it, or you find an, another way that that works better. And and there's reasons people have been doing things differently. So. Um, you know, once you write it out, you just write a paragraph and then you can kind of, you know, break that out into, you know, separate steps and statements, just, you know, bullet points, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and, um, you know, kind of add to it. And, you know, uh, it's sometimes the little things that get missed, especially if you're trying to bring in, let's say you, your, your brew pub has grown. And now you're going to hire somebody part-time who's, who's a home brewer, who's all excited and wants to come work in a brewery and is all excited about being the keg washer and maybe doing keg fills and stuff like that. Exactly. Just people come and go instead of having to, you know, hand teach them, you know, right at the beginning, every time you can hand them, you know, the SOP for this and say, okay, read through this. And then once you, you feel like you're ready with that, We'll do it together the first time. And then you walk them through and you, you show how all the steps in the SOP are important. You know, don't skip checking the uh, sanitizer level or whatever it might be, or temperature on the, you know, on the, the, the wash tank or whatever it might be. Yeah. Those things, you know, it, it just makes training somebody new for your brewery so much easier. And then you're sure that all of them are, you know, have the same process. And as you grow, uh, you know, that stuff can be, you know, quite, you know, quite beneficial. Right. Right. And as you're saying, you know, SOPs, you know, the reason you want to do SOPs is uh, improvement in uh, performance of people, yeah. uh, improvement in consistency. And that consistency leads to better consistency of your beer, mm -hmm. uh, better safety, which, you know, we all want that. We don't want anyone to get hurt. In right. uh, and then in compliance, you know, uh, complying with, uh, you know, the, the FDA, complying with, the, with OSHA, complying with TTV, uh, you know, all this stuff. Um, yeah. So it can be extremely helpful. I know it seems like a chore, but, you know, those, those, spare minutes or when you're trying to figure out a new process of yourself for yourself, it's like, okay, when you get that, you, you buy that uh, small canning line or, you know, uh, from, from somebody new or used, you get a little bit of training. Somebody, you know, talks you through starting it up, all that, write all that down, yeah. make that an SOP. And that way you're sure you're not missing something that, Oh, I forgot that they told us to, you know, flip this little valve here yeah close that chain guard you know before right. starting it up mm -hmm. right safety uh you know and just just basic functioning uh mm -hmm. you know how how you how you uh, run things yeah yeah osha is a real good example i came from aerospace and quality uh, i was quality manager for a while and of course, the controls that you have to operate under in aerospace are much tighter uh, than foods, modern food safety, but they're catching up. Um, you have ISO 9000 quality management systems. You have uh, OSHA, you know, safety management in, in the food safety. Well, for OSHA, there's a basic requirement that as an employer, you must provide a safe working environment Mm -hmm. And it, there is also provisions in OSHA that as an employee, you must adhere to the safe working practices that you know, are dictated by the employer. So you know, it's a two-way street. It's not all just on the brewery owner. 
it's also on you as an employee. And so having an SOP that describes the job to be done and describes the PPE to be worn Mm -hmm. and, you know, and cautions to be aware of, you know, that ensures communication between you and and your coworkers uh, and helps avoid accidents. Mm -hmm. And again, if you have, you know, and let's say there is an accident and there, there's always an accident, at least in my case, um, you know, you know, if it's a, a hot water burn or, you know, you bang your head on a piece of pipe or something, cut yourself um, or snap off someone's uh, mash rake in the, in the uh, rakes, you know, inside the mash tun. <clears throat> And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna invite you to my brewery anymore. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you <laughs> know dangerous. Yeah. You know, there's uh, these these things if you know if there are clear provisions, you know, in your SOP to mm-hmm. avoid these sorts of things or to be aware of them, um that shows diligence and mm-hmm. you know, should there be a major incident and the ocean inspector right. comes, look at it, you say, No, this this was in place, this was an accident. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was not negligence on our part right. kind of thing. And and that's the difference between slap on the wrist and a major fine. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. If, if they, if you're, if you're working with dangerous chemicals, dangerous, uh, you know, uh, liquids, you know, hot liquids, uh, you know, moving uh, motors and parts and things like that, they can, you know, chop a person up. Uh, yeah. You have to make sure that, you know, everybody that's in that location is properly aware of the dangers, has proper safety gear, does, you know, and if they're involved in, in using that stuff, you need to have uh, those, those uh, SOPs as well. Yeah. Somebody, somebody gets hurt. They're going to, they're going to look at where they properly trained, you know, were they given, you know, plenty of warning about, you know, what the dangers are. And if, if you say, yeah, everybody gets, this SOP book, everybody is, you know, shown these and made to read these, you know, before they start any jobs and then they're given, you know, individual training. So yeah, that's absolutely helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What, 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 uh, what sorts of topics did you have in your SOPs, Camille? Uh, Well, I'll tell you that after the short break. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let's take another quick short break. And when we're back, I will uh, kind of reveal some of the SOPs that uh, we've done at Heretic right after this. Learning to brew has never been so disgusting. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. Uh, Talking SOPs, standard operating procedures, and uh, you know what what they mean uh, to the brewery. Um, So we have uh, maintenance SOPs. We have um, uh, you know brewing SOP. We have uh, you know we make uh, canned cocktails, and so the order in which things happen and exactly how they happen makes a difference in the resulting. uh, you know, product that we're trying to do okay. and, uh, you know, TTB compliance and all that. So we have a, an SOP for, for blending up the cocktails. Uh, we have an SOP for cleaning our, our still SOP for carbonation. Uh, there's an SOP for using the pilot system for the centrifuge for the fermenter cleaning, uh, uh, using the keg washer, uh, how to use the software that we use to track the distillery. It's called uh, Hoochware. So there's SOP for that. Uh, for making uh, our habanero uh, uh, infused uh, double IPA, uh, there's <laughs> SOP for that. SOP for doing PCR in the lab. SOP for when there's a power outage. Uh, um, transferring tank to tank. Uh, operating and, and, still. Cold brew coffee. inside those. SOPs. I mean, what uh, what do your topics within the SOP consist of? Like PPE, required equipment. You know, what what sort of things do you uh, cover? 
let's go to the fermenter uh, CIP. There's tank emptying and CIP preparation. So there's confirm that the glycol jackets are off on the tank to be cleaned. Step two, hook up a inch and a half gray brewery hose to the dump valve on the fermenter. Ensure that this hose is long enough to reach the nearest trench drain. Three, open the dump valve, dump all remaining beer yeast hops into the drain. Make sure to have a nearby water hose in the drain as well, helping spray the dumping liquid down the length of the drain. If you dump too fast, the drain will overflow, so you'll have to regulate the speed of dumping. Do this until the tank is empty and CO2 pressure is relieved. Verify on tank pressure gauge. Uh, four, open the valves on both COP and blow-off arms. Remove the manway door. Open the racking arm valve to expite the venting of CO2 from the tank. Rinse the interior of the tank with a garden hose to remove loose soil and remaining yeast. Scrub manway door opening on all sides and edges with a blue scrubby pad and rinse. Six, hose off the manway door gasket. Remove the door and uh, remove from door and soak in hot perco bright solution. Scrub the manway door, rinse, and set aside. Seven, remove all fittings on the bottom cone of the tank. These vary from tank to tank, normally include racking or blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Uh, part soaking. Let's see. Uh, attach the danger caustic and use sign. Then uh, there's a rinsing section. There's a caustic se- section. Um, uh, tells you how much caustic you'll need. You know the PPE to to wear. Um, uh, how to how to transfer the hot liquor to the tank safely. Uh, pump speeds. Uh, then the second rinse. Uh, let's see if uh, there's uh, an acid uh, section. There's a third rinse. There's a pressure test uh, to make sure that none of the uh, uh, there's no leaks. Um, okay. Yeah. So you have verification steps there, there too. Mm-hmm. And there's sanitization cycle. Um, and then there's cleanup. Uh, total of 77 steps. Clean from there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's comprehensive. I mean, as you say, you yeah. walk the person through, just like you're training. You know, you're training them how to do the job. We haven't updated this. The last update was uh, January twenty second of twenty nineteen, and so uh, you know we started this back in you know twenty ten, and uh, you know over nine years it got updated, changed depending on you know. Uh, improved ways of doing things and uh you know now it's it's solid you know we probably don't have to edit this uh for quite a while you know it's probably just going to stay you know very standard yeah unless Um, you change out a piece of equipment used in it yeah right right um here's another one power outage so um when the power goes out we try and have everything uh you know come back up safely. Um, but there's, uh, you know, a few things that, that don't, um, you know, if there's power outage, you know, turn off the compressor, you know, or, um, the hydro equipment. Yeah. Um, there's an air dryer that needs to be restarted after power out, but you need to check these two glycol pumps, the VFD. And then we've got pictures that show, Here's the, the one VFD that controls this chiller. Here's the other VFD, you know, That's and great. they should be on and you should see these numbers on them. If you don't, here's how you get them going. Um, there's one for the tap room uh, uh, services. Uh, and this SOP used to be quite long uh, and there used to be, uh, you know, quite a number of steps you had to take in order to, um, uh, get everything powered back up. And so it required, you know, somebody from the brewery, actually you had to, at one point you had to climb up on the roof and um, which is, it's, it's building's 30 foot high. So there's a big yeah. access ladder. You had to go up there. You had to remove a panel. Uh, you had to bring tools to remove a panel from the chiller, then get into this box that housed this VFD in the chiller to this circulation pump. And you had to restart that. So over the years, I'm just like, this is, this is terrible. Cause you know, like once a year, the power goes out. Yeah. Um, so we ended up, you know, dropping, rewiring it. So the VFD lives in the brewery now. 
and the you know while the chiller's on the roof, which is you know quite ideal. Um, so now, we now a VFD is a very frightening device, or what? Yes, <laughs> uh, a variable frequency drive, right? So it oh. changes the frequency that goes to the uh, to to run a motor. And, uh, you know, when you're working with glycol to chill your tanks, the glycol is always circulating. So you need those pumps on those VFDs on, and some of them, uh, will restart. And, you know, some of them are, they hide the programming so well, you can't get them to restart running. Uh, but you, you know, we got all that done and, you know, they're in there where people can see them. So we train, we trimmed down something that was like a 20, you know, item long list of things to, to check and fix, um, and, um, required, you know, somebody to be in the brewery. And if the power goes out on the weekends and there's nobody in the brewery, you know, the tap room, you know, some of those people aren't familiar with it, but having the SOP in this case, you know, we saw what a large chore it was. Every time the power went out, we had to go through all these steps. So we started looking at, okay, how can we improve this part of our process? And the SOP was a big part of that. Really, yeah. really helped identify what things we could fix, what things we could change. And now the SOP for power outage is really, you know, just take a look and see if you see lights on these boxes and you're, you're good to go. <laughs> so, oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah. a great way of process improvement, mm -hmm. you know, with, facilitated by the SOP. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really am a big believer in uh, the the use of SOPs and, and uh, their their benefits to um, you know improving your your product. Because I, I also you know I look a lot at the SOPs when we started making the um, the cocktails, the uh, canned cocktails. Uh, you know, the question was you know, what about, uh, oxidation? What about, um, you know, safety, how do we, you know, uh, mix things in at the, you know, the correct, you know, temperature, how do we get things pasteurized or working with fruits or working with alcohols or working with, uh, you know, a bunch of different things. So the, uh, the RTD SOP has a day one, a day two, day three, uh, packaging day, there's uh, special instructions for things like, uh, you know, some of the moonshines we do or to make some of the ingredients like we make our own uh, uh, ginger beer uh, broth for our, um, our Moscow mule. And so we do that. We have to, we actually, instead of using like a fake extract, we actually make our own extract from powdered ginger oh, nice. um, in the uh, distillery uh, kettle. So there's an SOP for that. All these little things, you know, result in um, getting things right. Yeah. yeah. For example, um, they have, uh, you know, in this, the, <laughs> uh, the hoses that you use are adding, you know, it says adding, it adds an 8% uh, to the total volume needed, helps account for the error. So, um, we have to get a very precise amount of water into the tank and wow. alcohol into the tank. And we have to make sure that at the end, the ABV is correct. And, um, you know, you can't just wing it. You need to yeah. know exactly. Um, so, uh, that and making sure it's mixed, we have a certain speed that we use on a diaphragm pump for a certain amount of time in order to, uh, get it to, to, uh, you know, mix properly. We have carbonation, we have all sorts of stuff. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. I didn't know all those aspects went into, uh, those cocktails, but yeah, I'm sure the same thing for your canned beers and pure bottle beers as well. Right. Right. Um, those, you know, it's, it's more standard brewing, but the reason the SOPs were so important with the cocktails is we hadn't done anything like that before. So we had to come up with a process that, um, you know, again, you're able to pasteurize things without overheating things you didn't want to overheat. You, you know, um, it's, it's a, it's a tricky thing. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're trying to, um, 
you know, have consistency and quality. And that's, yeah. you know, and that SOP changed a few times, you know, we, sure. we came up with a, a plan and then we're like, well, that's not working quite right. And so we made sure to always update the SOPs because we bring in new people, you know, fairly big brewery and the people, you know, move on or move up and uh, the people that are, are doing it may move to a different job. So you need to be able to train new people. Um, mm-hmm. The SOPs are, are hugely uh, beneficial when yeah. it comes to that. And the fact that you have SOPs for other processes allows you to create the new SOP for that new product mm-hmm. pretty quickly. Yeah. And, you know, and you're able to borrow that technology, borrow that method mm-hmm. and have a very strong process from the get go, you know, on this new product, you know, a few tweaks, as you said, but, you know, you had a really good starting point mm-hmm. uh, that way. Well, and you can, you can, uh, you know, break it down into, you know, smaller segments, you know, and utilize those segments in other SOPs. So for example, you know, um, you know, cleaning the fermenter, you know, you can have an SOP on, you know, uh, mixing up the caustic and the acid, things like that, you know, working with the, uh, we have a, a dispense, a pneumatic dispensing system for caustics and acids. And so that in and of itself, you can't just walk up and just, yeah, I'm going to start pouring myself some caustic. You have to, you know, gear up properly. You have to make sure that, you know, the pressures are correct. You have to make sure that, you know, all this stuff is happening and that you're, you're yeah. acting in a, you know, a safe manner. Mm-hmm. Have all your lab animals lined up. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Oh, well, we've got a bunch of lab SOPs as well. And there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, um, you know, you, you've, you just really need to, uh, you know, consider how, how you work. And I think SOPs have, have led to, you know, quality improvement uh, at Heretic over, over the last decade. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, who else is, is big on quality and, and improving quality you know we i i know some guys over in uh, nevada <laughs> right. yeah and reno uh yeah. our good friends uh at brew chatter they're all about quality and uh you can tell that when you get into their store uh, you know when you talk to them about brewing when you uh when you taste the fine beers they have on tap uh, yeah it's uh they're all about quality and that's one of the reasons they've uh, decided to help sponsor this show is because uh i don't know they believe that we have something to say about quality yeah, they, yeah. i don't know uh, or they right. just like us that could that could be it too that's well like it. Yeah. me anyway yeah <laughs> that's true that's true i'm sure they like you me Meh. Yeah. everybody everybody comes to me just to get to you that's that's what they want they want some Palmer. And they, yeah. they see me as a as a as a uh, a less adept uh, you know gateway to to, to yeah. get get to you. Yeah, I, I don't consider you a sidekick, Jamel. <laughs> Not Not, I don't even reach sidekick status, is what you're saying. <laughs> I'm just a lackey, just a lackey. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well. Our friend Nick, Nick Ziegler just tested me, wondering if we were alive. Yes, we are. <laughs> hey, Nick. Yes, we are alive. Speaking of which, uh, I'm glad to be alive. Uh, I consider that a win. Yeah, definitely. Tomorrow we're doing. Uh, we're going to do live the um, uh, Brew Chatter Nevada Championship Brew Strong competition thing at yeah. 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific. It's going to be you, me, uh, Mitch Steele, uh, uh, and uh, the guys from Brew Chatter, and John Tall. Uh, We're all going to gather, and uh, some of us uh, virtually, but uh, you've been sent the beers, and Mitch has been sent the beers, and then we'll also have beers at our location, and we're going to determine the champion of this uh, this, uh, this giant competition. It's kind of like a a master's uh, competition where – you know, there's multiple rounds and in this round people were challenged to brew uh they all had to brew uh three different styles of beer 
okay. uh, to uh, qualify. And I think one is uh, a double uh, hazy IPA. One mm-hmm. is a Belgian dark strong, I think, with some sort of uh, spice or fruit or something. And then uh, the other is an Oktoberfest. So mm-hmm. challenging, three different yeasts. Yeah. Yeah. Three very different types of brewing, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, the 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 lo- uh, great multi lager, uh, you know, a Belgian ale that's spiced, that's a you know higher ABV. We get the the hazy IPA. Yeah. I mean, they gotta they gotta really you know work this thing. You gotta know what you're doing to to brew all three of those well. And so we're gonna yeah. choose the champion uh, uh, using so, those those beers. Okay, so not just best of show, but like best person that did all three styles the best right well we're, this is our first our first year so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work out what, what figure it out. Okay. we'll yeah. figure it out but uh yeah i think there's three people that have gotten to this this final round and there's three beers a piece so there's only nine beers to taste okay. but it's going to determine the champion which is kind of exciting and we are you know the thought was <clears throat> we could do this in the future i think uh, brew chatter supplied the ingredients for this final round for them to brew. Okay. So, um, you know, everybody's using the same ingredients and everybody's, you know, it's, it comes down to who's the best brewer. Right. So, yeah. uh, I, I think, I think that's uh, kind of exciting. Uh, and then, uh, we'll do it next year. That they, their goal is to, um, you know, make a, a great event that is, you know, uh, nationwide or worldwide, where wow. you know there's qualifying events and then you know the the later rounds and uh, yeah we were hoping to kind of you know make it make it a big party uh, you know for for the people uh, submitting their entries and maybe a big party at the at the end when the winners announce. That sounds awesome. That yeah, sounds awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward um, to it. Yeah. Going back to the SOPs here, uh, Nick asked an interesting question. He says, SOPs are so crucial to success and quality management. Do you distinguish between one-point lessons and work instructions? Hmm. I'm not familiar with the one-point lesson terminology, but uh, work instructions, yeah, does make sense. Those are, those are probably the majority of the SOP types. A one-point lesson is a simple, visual, and often point-wise description of a task. This means a standard which describes how a task should be performed. An OPL is made by using pictures, symbols, simple text, and is a short document. Okay. Right. I have I have seen these and um, single sheet kind of thing. Yeah, I would say like our our current uh, power outage SOP is an OPL. Like, oh, you know, okay. Wow. Here's a picture of the thing. Walk over to it check that the number on the screen is this if not you know press that button and then you know like the buttons are circled and the you know uh, it's very simple straightforward because we wanted something that anybody at the brewery could could you know uh get us get get the thing straightened out or, or figure out if if everything's okay after an outage so We've got people that their only training is in, you know, pouring beer, uh, you know, they're smart people, but they're not familiar with a lot of this equipment. And so this uh, is more of, I think, a, you know, one point lesson. What was the other term that he used? It was uh, work, work instructions. instructions. Yeah. Uh, one point lesson versus work instruction. Let's see. Uh, one point lesson is a visual work instruction print on a single uh, size sheet. The OPL solves a problem, improves a working method or process at a machine. Using the OPL action described can be taught quickly, therefore, from one person to the other. The complete process, therefore, can have multiple OPLs. Whereas a work instruction. Yeah, probably uh, consists of a couple of OPLs, more and more comprehensive. Possibly. Work instructions are documented that clearly and precisely describe the correct way to perform certain tasks that may cause inconvenience or damage if not done in the established manner. That is, describe, dictate, or stipulate the steps that must be followed to correctly perform any specific activity or work. 
so I'd say, yeah, the, um, you know, most of the SOPs are more work instructions, right? Yeah. Um, but they can be OPLs, um, five best practice strategies for writing work instructions aim for clarity above all work instructions should be clear and offer no wiggle room in how a step could be interpreted, make it accessible, check and update for consistency, use a credible source, keep it short and simple. There you go. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, generally, I would say if you can break your uh, SOPs into smaller uh, segments that don't uh, require a lot of, uh, uh, you know, huge, you know, where you could get lost in the process. Right, you know, right. Better if you can break it into chunks and that mm -hmm. chunk is, you know, really visible and it's completed and on to the next one, I would think. Yeah. Well, you mentioned your, your caustic dispensing. That's kind of an OPL. Mm -hmm. that, would that would be cited in several different SOPs. Yes. When I worked for Boeing, we did uh, a lot of things that way. You'd have a specification and you have a work instruction mm -hmm. and uh, spec might have several work instructions encoded in within it, you know, in the same way, taking big processes, breaking them into manageable uh, chunks there you go. And, and send steps. Yeah. All right, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll, we'll wrap up uh, the discussion of SOPs right after this. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. Oh, those breaks. That's a good chance to get up and, you know, run to the bathroom and, you know, grab yeah, my beer. Oh. Yeah. That's a beauty. <laughs> the, the, breaks, the breaks seem so long. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Nick asked another good question. Have we already covered the role of SOPs in certification and audits? Um, yeah, sort of. Uh, you know, we're talking about the, uh, the importance of, uh, SOPs and, you know, just defining that you have a safe and, uh, you know, uh, professionally run, you know, business, uh, kind of, uh, protects you in, in the case of, uh, accidents, injuries, um, uh, you know, and the audit of, of, of your process. Uh, one of the things that we do is, um, we have a really nice, uh, commercial insurance company. And one of the, oh. the benefits that they offer is they have people that can come and perform a mock OSHA inspection for you. Oh yeah. So we take advantage of that once a year, we have them come out and go through the brewery and crawl around and look at everything and point out anything that they think, you know, would be an issue. And one of the things that they'll do is look at the SOPs that we have, you know, they, they look to see that we have, you know, our, our chem safety book, you know, uh, readily accessible and that everything's in there and up to date. Um, they look at, you know, also the structural things, but they do look at, you know, SOPs is a big part of, you know, properly uh, maintaining uh, yeah. you know, your facility. And, you know, yeah. if, if there was a lawsuit or something like that, I'm sure, you know, they'd want to see the SOPs as well. Yeah. That probably translates to better insurance rates for y'all. Yeah. I, I don't know if it does, but it made, made me sleep better at night. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, it's just, it's so easy to, you know, miss one tiny little thing, you know, um, the interesting thing was, uh, we had a, the, when they put in the, the floor sinks, we had to have one near the boiler to drain the boiler and other stuff. And, um, the cover that was put on the floor sink, it had an open half and a closed half and the open half, you know, the hoses would go into for, for draining in there, but they were saying, you know, that's not quite safe. You know, somebody could step on that open half and, you know, catch a toe oh. and trip. And so they wanted me to replace that with a full grid, which got on eBay. I think it was 30 bucks <laughs> dropped it on there. And that was like the only thing, but I'm really glad they did because that, clearly it was possible somebody could have, you know, caught a toe or something and tripped never happened. Cause most people that aren't wandering around there, sticking their, their feet, you know, under yeah. and behind things, but 
you never know. Um, so I thought it was you know, very handy. Um, I'd rather, I'd rather somebody points it out, you know, before something happens and, uh, you know, we can take care of it than, you know, waiting for someone to get hurt. And again, I think the SOPs are a big, big benefit there because it kind of makes you think through, you know, what could happen, what could go exactly. wrong as you're, as you're, uh, you know, cleaning a fermenter, you know, right. you forgot to check that this was, you know, tight and that valve was closed or you forgot that the valve you know, needed to be open and you need to get rid of the CO2 before you put in the caustic because you're going to collapse your tank, all sorts of stuff like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dry hopping waterfalls. Right. Right. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the worst at it. Um, I'm good when I write stuff down, but if you ask me to, you know, teach you in person, a lot of times, unless I've written it down, uh, you know, I'll forget to mention things that I do, you know, just out of habit. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, um, again, uh, that's kind of the role of, uh, uh, SOPs, I think. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I'm no expert at SOPs, uh, but, uh, I do, you know, I, I don't think you need to be an expert. Uh, SOPs. I don't think you need to be an expert to brew, um, right. you know, either. Uh, and you can brew good beer. I think, um, you know, the same thing goes for the SOPs. You should, but if, if you have a, definitely, if you have a, a brewery, commercial brewery, you should be writing SOPs. You should take some time to write some SOPs. And uh, I mean, if you're the only person that works there, I guess you can kind of, skip it for now, but eventually you're going to bring another person in. And instead of having to tell that person everything and make sure you've gotten it correct, you can write it down and then you can make sure they follow it a uh, much better way of doing it. And, you know, the people that you bring in uh, to your brewery that you hire, um, they will appreciate it too. They will feel, you know, better trained, you know, it's, it's stuff that uh, when you get people that want to work in a brewery, they want to learn. You know, I, I've not seen anyone come into a brewery not wanting to learn things. And right. it's a great, a great way of, uh, you know, having all that information. Good, good. Well, I guess I we could, we could publish a, a book of uh, brewery SOPs, but, you know, they, they don't necessarily apply to everybody, but, um, yeah. you know, it could be a starting point. People could take that and, you know, adjust them and, and use them as a jumping off point. Mm-hmm. There you go, John. Our next book. <laughs> After I get these other books done, yeah. Brewery SOPs. Yeah. That wouldn't be bad. We should uh, we should pull that together. Okay, it's an idea. Yeah. Take all these we'll heretic do. SOPs and massage them into a book. Yeah. Well, let's get the, the revision of brewing classic styles done first. Yes, we got a lot to do. Busy, busy, busy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for, for tuning in and, uh, listening to the podcast. Uh, those listening live, appreciate your questions. Uh, those, uh, let's listen off the podcast. No worries. Enjoy, uh, send an email to John at, uh, uh, Blickman engineering or send it to feedback at Blickman engineering. Just tell him how much you appreciate his decade of, uh, of, uh, decades of support, uh, to the, uh, home brewing and to, uh, the uh, Brewing Network uh, listener crowd. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, till then, everybody, brew strong. Brew strong, everyone. <laughs>